What's up, guys? Welcome back for season three, episode three of Mic Drop Music Talk. I'm here with a very special guest, Callie Rod. What's up, guys? How are you? Happy to have a Floridian in the Let's studio. Go. Florida We're, girls. Florida girls. We East have Coast. come a long way. Yeah. We're a long way from home. Yeah. So tell me about growing up in Florida, because I'm oh. sure we have tons of similarities. Yeah. I mean, like the first of all, the, the weather. Oh, I love I love the weather. You know, obviously you get the humidity humidity side of it things, but love the weather. Just you know the beaches, yeah. like the lakes. Like I miss going on the lakes, the jet skis, and. I just being surrounded by family and we don't really have a winter in Florida so no. it's like just sunny all year round and that's what I love most about and you grew up like in Florida. Orlando yep. right grew up in Orlando I was born in Daytona Beach and okay. then uh grew up in Orlando Florida Lake Mary it's like oh my city. gosh yeah. yes I know Lake Mary yep. Yep. yeah so it's Lake Mary High School uh and I miss it I'll actually be going back home next week so that's awesome <laughs> and growing up in Florida did you always kind of have this pull to California, kind of like I did, or is this a surprising choice, maybe? I've actually always had this pull, um, believe it or not. Um, I used to go into Hollister a lot and look at their wall and see, like, the, the beach playing. Yes. In the back. Yes. And it's like Huntington Beach. I think that was the exact city that would be playing in Hollister, That's you know, so in the real. malls. <laughs> and so I would, like, always say, like, I want to move there. I want to move there. And then I would, like, watch, like, Laguna Beach and, like, the hills. those shows. Yeah, the yep. hills. And I'm like, like, I have to move there. Like, I want to move there. That's my dream to move to California. And I was able to make it happen, so. Yeah, they really shoved California down our throats as kids, right? 100%. Oh, my gosh. Now that I think they about me. it, <laughs> with the hills and Hol Hollister's a funny one. Yeah. Because I never really realized that. But subliminally, I think they got me too. Yeah. With the surf It just looks so like, I was like, man, that just looks so like a movie. Like, it just looks like a movie camp. Like, it's just a never ending movie. You see the mountains in the background. Yeah. While surfers are just going in and out of the water. I'm like, that's so dope. And you're like, I want to be there. Yeah. 100%. But as a singer, right? Yes. Or was singing always the dream? Did you have another kind of yeah. path in mind? So I grew up playing basketball. Um, I was state champion at AAU all my life. And um, so I, I first got started in the studio with uh, Crazy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony and Kmot and uh, a mom's friend of mine and they wrote my first rap and I, I rapped but I never really took it serious from there because I was all basketball I just thought and it was something cool and you were just a cool. kid just a kid they and loved they my speaking voice you. so much so wow. they thought it would be like good to put me into music so that's how I got introduced into like music and you know, it's it's funny. Um, life has a way of finding itself because I, or working itself out because I, you know, started as I got older and still playing ball. Like I would start writing country music. Like I always tailored my writing towards Taylor Swift. So she was a big influence on my writing and mm -hmm. like how I got into songwriting and you know, a lyricist I would say as well. And so uh, from then I just you know after basketball and NCAA clearinghouse things not working out with me there. I uh, just took on music full time and like, you know, found a new passion for it. And That is so crazy, though. There's so many like nuggets in there that I want to pull from. Yeah. First off being the guys from Bone Thugs and Harmony just yeah. liked your speaking voice yeah. as a child. Yeah. And wanted to collab with mm -hmm. you. Do yeah. you know how insane that is? Yeah. <laughs> like that is such a one in a million story. Yeah. Like, you're probably the only person in the world with that story. Absolutely. Yeah. Like my mom was dating Kmot, which is like a friend of a... Uh, a crazy bone and I remember we pulled up to this kangaroo gas station I'm like Mary's like right off the exit 98 yeah. I'll never forget and and my sister is in the car in the back seat with us and she was so mad that she couldn't come so she was so upset that they were like no not this time like they just wanted me yeah and yeah I get told a lot about my speaking voice you know like, I, you have rest. a very unique speaking voice yeah <laughs> you should look into like some voice acting maybe yeah. while you're out here like seriously for sure yeah that would be so fun yeah like a little cartoon. I play it on it. You know, I always wanted to win a Grammy, Emmy, and an Oscar. So you never know. Yes. Perfect. That's such a natural yeah. progression, it seems. Absolutely. But what was it like? Did you go in the studio with them? Like as a 10 year old kid? I'm I sure did. that was so intimidating. I did. I did go in the studio with them. There was like this pit bull that greeted us at the door. I went in the studio, but I was. I was like one of those, I'm a talker. Or you probably maybe didn't even process it. Yeah. Like, did you, you probably didn't even know. I didn't like, even know. I didn't yeah. even just like, 
I don't know, whatever. Like, yeah. I don't even know who this is. Like, I don't even, we didn't have that iPhones or like Instagram back yeah. in the, that day, but um, when I was 10, but I was just like, yeah, whatever, cool. I'll make a song. <laughs> but I was like so confident with my myself and in basketball that I was like one of those players that are like, yeah, I'll talk my talk and back it up. So I just kind of went into it like, yeah, I'm here. What's up? Write my rap. I'm going to rap it. And then like, like kind of like I'm the ish. You yeah. Know? Oh my God. They probably loved that. Yeah. <laughs> I would lo- We're going to have to see if you can find some like pictures from that time. Yeah. That is so amazing. Yeah. So you have this pretty insane credit under your belt at like 10 years old. Yeah. But you're like, yeah, whatever. I want to focus on basketball. Yeah. And you play basketball from childhood all the way through high school. Yep. And 18 then, years old. Yeah. yeah. So what happened at 18 that you're like, well, I don't want to pursue this maybe to the college or professional yeah. level. Yeah, you know, I had a lot of offers on the table and then just, like, scoring with SAT and ACT really? kind of, like, yeah, messed me up with the clearinghouse. Took the very last one that I could take um, as a to meet the requirement. And, you know, our coaches always, uh, like, try to install into our head to take it as soon as you can, which is, I think it starts your sophomore year. I don't know yeah. if things have changed now, but... If I could encourage people to definitely take your SAT and ACT as soon as you can and are possible, it's possible that you are able to take it because I waited till the very last one to take. So I really couldn't mess up. I really had to score oh, man. and get this meet the scores. Yeah. That is so, so oh, there should be a better way. Yeah. Like that sucks that yeah. there so, was no wiggle room. Yeah. And so like, they are like, you know, you could go the Juco route for two years. And I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm too good for that. And, and I, as I started getting older, too, I I had the dream as a kid. I was the type of player that was like, I want to be the first woman in the the NBA. So, like, that, that was my goal. I was like, I always had big dreams. And, like, you know, as I started getting older, you start to learn more and see more. And I knew, like, the WNBA, you know, it's coming up. And I'm so happy to see that it's, yeah. like, getting on a bigger notice. And, like, you know, they are, you know, paying the players. I know they should be paid more. But um, I knew, like, you know, playing the WNBA, like, you know, money-wise, it's, wise, change it's compared not to really the NBA. sustainable, yeah. you know, like, it's not really something that's, I was just like, you know, that's not really something I want to, like, bust my tail doing and not really getting the, you know, the You're money. You're not going to be able to live the compensate. kind of lifestyle yeah. that you want to live. Yeah. yeah. How crazy that you yeah. can be a professional athlete yeah. and, like, not being able to make ends meet. Yeah, 100%. Gosh, that's, it's like, a insane. whole topic for yeah. another day. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you're 18 years old and now... You decide it's time for music. Yep. And how did that go? You said Taylor Swift. Yeah, I still I was still writing. I think I picked up a pen like sixteen. So I still just started writing on this big notebook, and yeah. I uh, would just write songs. Like I listened to Taylor Swift so much, Kelly Clarkson and Pink and Paramore, and No Doubt. And I listened to all of those uh, amazing legendary artists, and I think I just geared my writing towards country. Like I, country's my favorite genre. Well, Florida, that makes sense. Yeah. Like. Country music is huge in yep. Florida. Yeah. Yep. I just love the the meaning behind it and the songs. It's like very like narrative based and it's like very much tells a story. So like that's how I wanted to implement in my music, like that every song that I release tells a story. So cool. yeah, it's inspired by country. That's actually funny that you say that because I was listening to your songs in the car this morning <laughs> and I was listening to the lyrics and the first question that came to mind with a lot of the songs was like oh I want to know the story behind this yeah I swear to god yeah like not even knowing that that was your intention I was like you you leave like these breadcrumbs for a story but yeah. you can't quite piece it together so I was like okay yeah I want to know the story behind yeah. that Very 100%. Cool. yeah so how did it kind of evolve from country to what would you say you are now like pop, pop? for Straight sure up pop. Yep. yeah sure at pop I knew I didn't want to be a country singer yeah. I just wrote I just, you know, listening to pop, I didn't really find, um, now it's, it, I feel like it's definitely changed, but yeah. like, I didn't really find like the, the narrative storytelling, you know, back then I like found that into country. Yeah. So like, I knew like I would never sing country, like that wasn't tailored to me. I love pop music. I knew like, you know, I just was more of like a pop artist, but I wanted to implement that like take you know what can I take from each and like and make it my own and I feel like I've done that as an artist kind of like yeah. unique voice and uh you know like a unique pen as well so I feel like I've just taken bits and studied and learned and made it into my own yeah yeah and then so once you kind of came up with your own sound you're probably like 
late teens, early 20s at this yeah. point, is that when you decided to move to LA? Or what was the decision that you're finally like, okay, yeah, it's I actually, need to go where the surfers are? <laughs> yeah, it's actually pretty crazy. Like, I've, uh, I'm so much of a family uh, woman. And yeah. So it was hard to really leave my family. Like, I, I knew... Um, like at some point I reached my ceiling I felt like in Orlando totally. like, I, like I felt like I could strive more every time I visited here um, it was just like breathtaking for me and like just meeting so many people I knew like this is the place where I needed to be but it wasn't until my father passed away from lung cancer in 2019 in May that I finally told my mom I was gonna do it she's always pushed me to follow my dreams yeah and so I did I moved and I started looking for places like probably a month later, and then I ended up moving in October of 2019, so. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I'm still kind of freshly new, but, yeah. like, yeah, that was, like, what kind of pushed me to, like, do it and grind, and, like, it's, like, I gotta get, I gotta make it, I gotta get this done, you know. So it was kind of, do you think, in a way, like, to honor your dad, was that something that your dad, like, really made important to you, or was it just kind of realizing, like, oh, my gosh, life is short. Like, yeah. I got to go. Yeah, I think it was more so life is short. Like, I wasn't really, like, close with my dad. Yeah. Um, but, like, you know, my mom's my best friend, and, like, that's... So I just kind of felt like I not only owed it to her, but owed it to myself and, like, and with my faith as well that I just would continue to push and, like, work at my dreams and not give up. Yeah. So, like, I felt like... Um, like, yeah, like, I, I just felt like, you know, time is short, and I want my mom to be able to see, like, the success that I have with it. Yeah. So that's why I felt like I needed to, like, all right, let's 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 do this, you know. And what's it like since you've been here? Like, do you feel like it's been worth the cross-country oh, move? Because I yeah. really struggle with that as well. <laughs> like, I'm also super close with my family, and it also took me a lot to finally, like, pull trig and do it. Yeah. But you feel like it's been worth oh, it. Oh, it's I feel like it's 100% been worth it because yeah. I've met so many amazing people. I've gotten stronger in my faith here. Like, it kind of pushed me to, like, really lean on my faith and God and, like, you know, um, surround myself by really good people that bring yeah. me closer to God as well. But um also just like meeting people in the industry and getting in the rooms that I could have never imagined being in being back in Florida so it allowed me to like just go out to different events and just meet people kind of like expand my network as well so yeah. like I feel like it's so much been worth it I honestly feel like everything in life you go through even the good and the bad it's all worth it totally because it brings you to you know builds character and makes you into a better person as well so I was just thinking about that this morning yeah I swear to god I was just thinking about how like I feel like successful people don't look at, like, failures as failures. Mm -hmm. They look at them as lessons. A hundred percent. And yeah. it's like, I don't think anything's ever really a failure unless you don't get anything out, out of, it. of it. Yeah. But, like, what? how often is it that you get nothing out of something? Yeah. Like, very few things very I feel like are things. true failures. Yeah. I don't feel like anything, honestly. Like, I feel like every single thing you go through is going to make you stronger because at the end of the day, you're going to get out of it. Something. You're, something, There's whatever some you get lesson. out of it. Yeah. yeah. So, like... Whatever you're doing, whether it's like, I got to get out of this funk. I need to work out more. Well, the beauty of it is you start working out more. Like, there's so many ways to look at things. And, like, so I really truly believe, like, you know, all of your failures are, like, made to bring you into a better person. Like, it's it's means something, you know? A hundred percent. Like, but I think you also have to take a lot of, like, self-awareness. And, like, you're saying, like, yeah. it, when you're in that funk and being like, okay, well, now I need to work out. Yeah. And, like learning from those like do you know what I'm trying to yeah. say no, like 100%. like being conscious and learning and then learning. like applying those yeah. skills yeah a hundred percent and you were talking about how like you're in these crazy rooms and you're having these encounters like who's somebody that you've come into contact with or maybe collab with that you're like holy shit I would have never expected this um I would say Neo Neo, Neo? yeah I've been in the studio with Neo and he's just like, you know, somebody of that caliber, you're always, like, kind of just, like, oh, I'm just going to sit back. You don't really know what to expect because yeah. they've, they've been in the game for so long. But he was one of the most genuine people that I've ever, like, been in the studio and got to, like, work with and ex see him work as well. Like, it's it's amazing to see because I feel like you can just learn from those situations and the rooms that you're in. So How they, like conduct themselves exactly. and carry themselves and interact. Yeah. Yeah. Super nice, a hugger type of guy, like... You know, you you reach out your hands like I'm a hugger, which I love. I'm a hugger Me too, too, but you never know people. But you know, I was able to Facetime my friend, um, and he's like, "Oh, who are you talking?" He's like, "It was my friend. It's her birthday." He's like, "Happy birthday!" So it's just like cool. Like it's cool to see. But at the end of the day, I look at, you know, I know they're everybody's human and everybody's, you know, like 
So I know they want to be treated as just like a normal human being, but you yeah, because I'm sure like all the headache of like just you know being outside, not being able to eat without a camera and whatnot. So it's pretty refreshing to see like man, like you come into them and meeting them in those rooms. It's just like yeah, dang, they're just like us, like I you know. know us people. So are you prepared for that? Like if your music takes off and you're like is that something you desire because i don't necessarily desire fame yeah and i know people find that hard to believe because yeah. i think when you move to la especially when you move across the country it's like damn she must really want it yeah but i think a lot of people don't understand that maybe you like that's not your motive yeah like, like what is like your why yeah i, I look at it as like that's a great question uh I'll touch on that as well. But I look at it as, like, I don't desire fame. I desire to, like, to make, like, use my platform as an artist to not only, like, you know, share my faith with others, but also the, to have thousands of people across the world singing my songs, like, yes. impacting them in their lives and, like, st telling stories through my song. Like, it's obviously, like, fame and fans come with that, but I don't, like, that's not why I do music is to be famous and have like cameras around my face yeah. like I do music because I enjoy music I love singing and I want to be able to perform in front of thousands of people and have that like just that energy and like be in the moment of like having people like just sitting back and like just letting people sing your songs is just like incredible to me but like yeah. you know and to use my platform to help others you know like that's going to come as well to to give back to a lot of things and people so like, that's what I desire, and that's, I feel like that's my why, and, you know, like, obviously my why is, like, I'd say my mom, yeah. as well as, like, showing and, and letting the world see, like, you know, another child or, you know, African-American like myself, especially, like, a female in pop music is very, very hard to yeah. do, like, you know, as a black artist, as it is, so to show that they can do and be anything that they want to be, and no matter what genre, to not allow someone to limit them. Totally. To, you know, put box them in that just because the color of their skin that they can do and be because, you know, it's not it's it's unorthodox, you know, so but I want to make it normal, you know. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. That's such a great answer. You have such a good head on your shoulders. It's so refreshing. <laughs> um, we're going to switch and play a little game. Yeah. You know? Heck yeah. Let's All right. It. Let's do it. All right, guys, we are back for a very exciting game of this or that. First time playing this game on the show, and you guys know I never brief my guests, so it's all off the top. Are you down? Yes, do let's do it. Do you accept this challenge? I accept. Okay, we'll start easy. Okay. Sunrise or sunset? I'd have to say sunset. Okay, and why? It's so beautiful. Like, look at the sun coming down, the skies, and the pictures. Definitely for the pictures. Yeah. And you're not like a morning person? No. You're not going to set an alarm to, <laughs> to go watch the sunrise? No. No. That's a bit much, yeah. Okay, this next one, Florida or LA? Ooh. Florida or California, let's say. Do I have to choose? I know, oh it's so gosh. hard. This or that, that's the challenge. Ooh. I gotta go with home, Florida. Yeah. Gotta go with home. Yep, gotta. why? What is it about Florida? That's just home. Like, you know, like, there's no place like home. It really is true. You yeah. know, like, I'll go back. That'll always be my home. Like, I plan on eventually having a house in, back in Florida as well, traveling back and forth. I love yeah. LA, but... It's not home. It's not home. Okay, this one is another maybe tough one. Call or text? I'd say text. Yeah. I don't really like talking on the phone a lot. Like, you, yeah. gotta, you gotta let me know ahead of time. Like, yeah. It's so like, I'll be in the middle of something, I'm like, ugh, like, why are you calling me? And I know. I'm, sorry, friends, but I do look at my phone sometimes and be like... No. Watch it ring. Yeah. <laughs> No, an unsolicited phone call, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that it's rude. I think as an adult, you got to at least text them and say, do you have time to talk? Yeah. Like, we don't have to do, like, a full-on Google Meet, but I think you should set a time. For sure. People got shit to do. They can't always take your call. We can't. But I could, I do feel like I can always take a text. Yeah, 100%. Text, because you can respond at your leisure. Yeah. I, don't even get me started on no that. No read receipts. Yes. Okay. Next one, iced coffee or hot coffee? Iced coffee. Easy. Easy. Yeah. I don't even drink coffee, but I'm a matcha girl when I do. Ooh. So I'm a green tea matcha. Ice iced matcha? Yeah. Oh, that sounds delicious, actually. Yep. So good. Okay. Foresee the future or change the past? 
Ooh. I know, it's a tough one. That's a tough one. I definitely wouldn't want to see foresee my future, so I'd probably, if I could go back, change my past. You wouldn't want to see the future? No. Really? Why? No, I just... I just wouldn't want to see, like, I'm, I'm just... You like the mystery of it all? Yeah, you know, like, I yeah. feel like if you see it, you kind of, like, just know, and there's no, like... So no psychics no. or tarot cards for oh, you? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. Never. Not for me. <laughs> no, I know. It is kind of weird to, to, like, imagine, but changing the past, what would you change? Just, like, you know, some things that I've done in the past, like, uh, how I would have, like... Uh, treated some people differently or like yeah you know our relationship with my dad I changed that like had a better relationship with him and you know before he passed away I think like seeing the future it's like there's no excitement to life at that point like Damn. you're just kind of like you're living going down this road that you already know where you're going down and like what kind of like you know yeah. like you're just like following following like what what you saw you know specific choices to get a specific result it's like you know there's no like in that that point what's life damn that got deep real fast (laughs) that's a great answer that's very true because i think i would instinctually say foresee the future Mm -hmm. but now you got me thinking i don't know (laughs) okay next one is luxury beach mansion or quaint quiet cabin luxury beach mansion for sure i mean for sure i'm a beach girl yeah spontaneous trip or full itinerary? Like spontaneous you, trip. Yeah? Spontaneous trip. Like, because at that point, you're like, you're you're free to do whatever at your leisure. Yeah. Like, a full itinerary, it's just like, we have this, we have this, we have this, and then it's just like... So when you travel da, da, da. with people that it's are like, like anxiety, that, like, you know? It's like, we have to be on time for this, on time for that, rather than you just go spontaneously. It's just yes. like, you can do whatever. It's like, oh, I looked up this restaurant. Let's go here. Let's... Totally. Let's go to this shop. I'm the same way. You know? Yeah. I like leaving room for yeah. adventure. 100%. Exactly. Okay. Huge tour of people who don't know your music or a private, intimate show of your biggest fans. So on the one hand, you have the opportunity for exposure to a whole huge crowd, a yeah. stadium. Or you could sing to like a hundred of your of your riders. I'm going to say a huge tour. Like, yeah. Yeah, there's, no better, <laughs> there's no better feeling like that. You know, it's, it's so funny. I just went to Morgan Wallen on Sunday and there was someone in the crowd and he sold out crypto twice and there's someone in the pit with us and he's like, I don't even know who this is, but this is so lit. Wow. So it's just like that environment and that experience of like just having thousands of people like, you know, watching you and you're performing. Like, if it's good music, they're going to jam out anyway. And he was jamming out, like, jumping up and down. Never heard a Morgan Wallen song, so. Yeah. It's so funny that you say that because uh, we had a guest last week. Her name was Nala. And she kind of put together these two dots that I had never considered before. But she was a competitive cheerleader growing up. And she was talking about how we would go to these stadiums as kids. Yeah. And we would get kind of addicted to, like, performing in the applause. Mm-hmm. And probably the same with you with 100%, basketball. 100%, yeah. And, like, did you ever even think of that before, no, though? No, I haven't actually thought about that. She yeah. blew my mind with that one. Yeah. I was like, whoa. It's true. My best friend was in competitive cheerleading, so I got to see them perform. Yeah. And it's, like, good routines. Like, we're all standing, clapping, cheering. And you get addicted. You get addicted. To that feeling of, like, it's a show. performing and creating a crowd. Yeah, 100%. I was like, whoa. 100%. So I feel like, yeah, same with basketball, too. Yeah. Okay, so you're living the high life. Private chef or chauffeur? Private chef. Yeah? Private chef, for sure. Oh, wouldn't it be nice? I love to cook, but, I mean, like, to have just the meals, you can come in, boom, boom grab, no go, thought. no Yeah, thought. just That's, ready to that'd go. That would be amazing. That would be Amazing. I love driving. Like, I love listening really? to music. I'm a music girl, so I can, like, yeah. I love drive just to listen to music. Even in L.A., you like driving? Not as much, yeah. but, like, I still do, because, like, it's a time where I could just sit by myself and jam out to music, you Yeah, know? L.A. driving is yeah. a whole other thing. I know what times not to drive, so. Yeah, that's key. <laughs> that is very key. Okay, so this last one, it's a tough one. Okay. We're going we're gonna to finish with a... With a real punch in the gut. Uh Uh-huh. So you're on a desert island, and you can only... There's only room in the getaway boat or helicopter, whatever it is. And you're on this island with Taylor Swift and (laughs) Kelly Clarkson, two of your biggest influences. Who are you going to (laughs) save? You can only save one. I gotta go with Taylor. Yeah? I'd save Taylor. Kelly's gonna defend herself. Oh, Kelly, I'm so sorry. (laughs) 
What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Stand a little. But I'd come back for you. Yeah. I'd send help. Yeah, you'd like get to shore. Get to and shore, then, then come back. Immediately for If I got to swim back and put you on my back, I would. Yeah. So die hard Taylor. Die hard Taylor. Fair enough. But we leave no man's behind. Yes. Well, good job. Thank you. Great answers. I feel like we learned a lot about you. Kelly Clarkson did too. I'm sure she heard that last one loud and clear. Um, But let's talk about what you got going on. Yeah. Because you are obviously cooking up some stuff every single day out here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you just had a release, I think, recently, correct? Yep. So tell us about that. Yeah, it's called I Can Write 100 More and... basically about like you know being a relationship and it could go both ways of like a friendship or just a regular relationship and yeah. it's like primarily like the the thought of behind it is like there's been so many things that like you've done to me that I like just kind of let go and let let happen yeah and it's just like I could write a hundred more like whether it's like just little tidbits you get mad or you know or raise your voice at me because I didn't wash a dish or whatever so it's just like there's so many things and finally, I was just like, I'm out. Like, you know. So I could write a hundred more be- means like, I've been kind of like, there's a hundred more things I could say about you. Exactly. I love that. Yeah. And like the cover art was kind of paying homage to 10 Things I Hate About You, which is a movie that came out in yes. 1999. I love that. I yeah. kind of got that vibe. I was listening to it in the car this morning and it was giving me like Y2K. Like yeah. 100%. Rom-com energy. 100%. Yeah. Yes. And... You have like a music video coming out for that, or um, we haven't what's the set plan? sights on the music video just as of yet, just because like we've so much going on with like getting the EP together, yeah. and the next singles. So it's just been a lot, like you know. And are you independent right I'm now? I'm independent. Yeah. So it's a lot of work, a lot more it's work. So much than, work. You know, it's a it's a definitely like a steady and hard, much harder grind, but it's all worth it. So yeah. So are you kind of coming up with your own release schedule then, since you're independent? Yep. And what are you thinking? Like, when do you yeah. think something's coming? Um, I think uh, we'll try to at least aim for one more single to come out before, you know, the fourth quarter ends, which is, like, uh, like I think mid-November. So that's, like, my deadline. Yeah. So we'll try to get one, like, end of October out, mm-hmm. like, right after my show that's coming up, so... Yes, and you have a show. Or before my show, yep. In L.A. In L.A. Is this, like, your first L.A. show? It's my first live show, oh like, with a band, like ticketed show so i'm excited how did this come about um so there's this platform called breaking sound and like they they have a lot of like upcoming and like rising emerging artists that come on their their sets like you kind of got to get approved for it yeah and um so you know we've kind of like been in talks and they were like yeah, we'd love to have you for a show and so um november 3rd at the peppermint club so fun yeah. That's a great venue, too. Yeah, it's an like awesome venue. I got to see Bieber perform there last year, like, around Halloween. Like, yeah, amazing. With his band, so. So you have, like, the whole set list planned out. I just got that off this morning. So, like, you know, now it's, like, about just kind of, you know, going, making sure I'm, like, staying through all of my, like, uh, you know, rehearsals and vocal rehearsals and all of that. Like, just so I don't get on stage and get into a funk of, like, what the heck? Yeah, no, because so much goes into a live show. Yeah. Like, you don't just show up and sing. Oh, no. You have no. to organize the set list. Yep. You have to practice the with tracks. your band. Yep. The, the tracks. tracks have to get redone to performance tracks, so you're not just up there with an instrumental. Yeah. You actually have to recreate the tracks to a performance track. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So what is, like, your goal from the live show? Like, do you just want to go out there and have a good time? Yeah. Are you going to try and, like, network? Or, like, what's... Yeah, I just want to go out in there and just... Have fun. Have fun. Like, yeah. the most important thing is, like, to have fun in what you do and, like, what you love. So I'm excited. Like, I could probably... Every time I get on stage, there's obviously a little nerves, but um, I'm excited. I'm excited to just go out there, have fun, do what I do, and just kind of, like, let, you know, the world see, like, who I am as an artist and, like... Who Cali Rock is. I feel like having your own show is like such a moment. Yeah. And it's like, how many songs are you gonna get to do? Do you know? Uh, it's a 30 minute set. Yeah. So it's pretty good uh, length of a set. So I think I've got like b- between five to six right now. I may narrow it down to just five and kind of like add the talking points. Yeah. 
So, um, but it, it's a relief off my shoulder. I got my band together. So I have a band, uh, uh, like band director that, that's like handling everyone in the, so I'm like relieved that I don't have to like, like I think, felt like that was like the hardest part of like finding someone that's like, you know, you're in, to be a part of your band and then like have someone taking control of that, like really use so much off of my shoulder. Yeah, no, it's, it's so hard when mm-hmm. you're independent. Because oh yeah. That all usually falls on you. So yeah. that's great that you have someone to kind of like delegate for mm-hmm. you a little bit. Yeah. But November 3rd, yep. we got the show. Yeah. We got an EP coming probably 2023. 23, for sure. That's so exciting. Yeah. So guys, we actually couldn't get enough of her and have kind of convinced her to do a little bit of a preview of one of her upcoming singles. And she's agreeing to do it a cappella, which is amazing because we don't have obviously all the proper tools here, but you guys are in for a real treat. So Callie, what are you gonna sing for us today? Yeah, this song is called Gentle. And it's about like just going through and experiencing so much trauma in my life and just like things that I've gone through that I've stayed so much strong yeah like so strong through like you know like with losing my father losing my brother losing my stepdad you know in my life and so it's just like just so much like that I've gone through it's just kind of like just be gentle with my heart like I come through a lot I come I come with a lot and it's okay you know but like we grow from that and it's just like you know, like and I'm still working on myself. Gentle too. Oh yeah. Like you're such a gentle person. Yeah. Like you would never imagine. Yeah. That you've been through all that. Yeah. So, so I'm excited to hear. It's called gentle, and here's like a little snippet of the hook, okay. and it goes. Look in your eyes and wonder what you see, cause I still got scars on my memories. Y'all, the ocean waves crashing at my knees. And I've drowned before, so be gentle with me. Cause I've drowned before, so be, be gentle on me. Woo! Yeah. So good. Isn't her voice incredible? It's so unexpected and soft and yeah. sultry, and I just <laughs> love it. And you guys can obviously listen to her on Spotify. Yep. Where else? Everywhere. Uh, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, Deezer, wherever you please. And they could follow you at? At Cali Rock, and that's at K-A-L-L-I-E-R-O-C-K. Perfect. Thank you so much, Cali.